Hello, my name is Thomas Corgan. I'm a research assistant here at the Adrian Arsh Latin American Center. And today we're having a cafe called David Goldwyn. David's our senior energy fellow here at the Adrian Arsh Latin America Center. And he's just authored a report on Petro Caribe in the Caribbean entitled Uncertain Energy, the Caribbean's Gamble with Venezuela. David, thank you for joining us here today. I want to ask, because you've got such great insight as both an energy expert leader as president of Gold Goldwyn Global Strategies and a former U.S. diplomat, how has Petro Caribe created this culture of dependence in the Caribbean energy matrix? Well, for, uh, for nearly a decade, Petro Caribe has uh, been a program where Venezuela has provided easy credit for countries to buy product or crude oil. And so the governments have grown dependent on this financing because they get the, they pay 5% down or 10% down and the rest of the money they can save or invest but more likely they spend it. So they have grown both dependent on the fuel which is diesel and fuel oil, very high carbon, um, expensive uh, and heavy fuels and they've grown dependent on the cash flow as well. That's a hard dependency to break because to let that go you're going to have a big hole in your budget and you've also got to convert the way you generate electricity. Right. And when we think of solutions for the future, not only for the new markets, but also environmental concerns, where is the opening for U.S. natural gas? And what are the factors that make it opportunistic for the Caribbean? Well, virtually every country that's trying to lower its carbon profile and get cheaper electricity is moving from fuel oil and diesel to natural gas. The U.S. has already done this. This is the core of Mexico's energy reform. So this is the roadmap for the Caribbean, and the Inter-American Development Bank's uh, pre-feasibility study has kind of laid this out. So the opening for the U.S. is that because we have um, a, a lots, of, lots of natural gas and we're going to begin to export it in a few years, we can provide a price competition. So countries in the Caribbean can buy Henry Hub price gas. We're closest, and they can, they can get it more cheaply. And so it's an opportunity for us to help them sell them gas and get them cheaper fuel. Got it. And it, it sounds like even with this surplus of U.S. natural gas, there are roadblocks in the way. What action can not only the U.S. energy industry, but also the Obama administration take to eliminate these roadblocks and make U.S. natural gas a viable solution? Well, the easiest thing they could do is to declare that, um, that LNG exports to all of the Caribbean and Central America are in the national interest. And then under the Natural Gas Act, that means that you would, it would be deemed to be approved. And that would make it easier for project exporters to, to sell them gas. That would be the, 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 the number one thing we could do. Well, thank you, David Goldwyn, very much for joining me today. We very much appreciate your work here for the Adrian Arsh Latin America Center. And I thank you for joining us on the LADAMP channel today.